Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About Lego with me, Jason, with the Brick Stop, and of course, we got Brick Monarch, Andrew. Andrew with Brick Monarch, whatever, you know, you, you know the drill, you guys know, you've been here before, what are we talking I'm the about? King, the king of all bricks. The king, the king of all bricks, get out of here, bro. True. <laughs> True. Uh, how's, uh, how's, it, how's it been going, man? Pretty good, man. Staying very busy. Yeah, very yeah, busy. it seems like, it seems like that's the just the kind of the tune we're all marching to right now it's just busy time people people coming out of hibernation jobs well, picking up, things. you know things. we had we had some 80 degree days yeah last week and like now it's 40 degrees out so i got like super pumped sure sure you know for the summer <laughs> right and it was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then it killed it you're like wait i don't have to be productive quite yet mm -hmm. yeah i feel it man for sure um well let's see welcome everybody thanks for joining in thanks for the new subscribers who trickled in over the week we appreciate yeah, you definitely. guys here, being here yeah yeah um as always we got super chats turned on we'll address those first if you guys leave a donation um we'll make sure to get to those and uh we thank you for all the people who already have done that including right now retro space long time fan of the show friend of the channel um <laughs> evening lads more great parts in this theme Love the blue hard plastic wheels. Absolutely. Yeah, they're dope. Good point. Yeah. So as you can see, obviously, we're hitting insectoids as a follow-up to the UFO line. Yep. From last week's talk. Um, 1998 release. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. I, I, This one's kind of one of those that sort of floats under the radar for me a bit until I look at it again and get really, really it's, into yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's killer. It's so cool, man. It's like that perfect mix of creativity and like innovation with old parts with the new parts coming in to to add that accent to to make it a real interesting, unique theme. So I like yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> Spacer Nate has a uh, comment here. Hey everybody, ready for this weird theme? <laughs> See, that's a, that's that's the energy you come at like um It is. You you come at uh what is it? Uh uh what's the stupid time twisters that's the one yeah yeah you come you kind of you, you kind of have that attitude on <laughs> it kind of looks it, it's twisters. kind of like like a weird i don't know i'm not even sure the proper word for it because my vocabulary is limited sure i'm the, I'm the king of the bricks um just the but, bricks not, not but necessarily anyway, the dictionary <laughs> um, no i mean when you really really look at this i mean the figs are awesome the sets are badass yeah the, the concept and the storyline is killer yeah you know so if you just if you think about it like it's its own planet and its own has its own vibe and world mm -hmm. it's very cool it's very very cool yeah there's some really cool exclusive and the and the colors the, the color scheme is very 90s too yes yeah you got like black, like, blue, like hot topic yeah. gadzooks type <laughs> oh sure <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying like the 90s vibe heavy yeah. 90s vibe on it for sure absolutely absolutely i i totally feel that for sure tricerion let's do this absolutely we got j e blip bloop blap blup yeah i agree i mean that's kind of what we're getting with this theme it's it's a lot of weird <laughs> beeps and bops it's a it's a bizarre situation <laughs> love the trans neon under the black light that's one that you actually played with andrew a little bit when you were younger right oh yeah I've yep. got a black light hanging over here on the bar so I can look at any of my sets under black light anytime. Just gotta plug it oh, in. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that was from Stuck Bricks. Andrew Auburn, remember cracking one of these for a birthday. Uh, cracking open one of these for a birthday, etc. As a kid it was I was like, whoa, mind blown. Yeah. Yeah, this is <laughs> You know, seeing the images in the catalogs, right? Because we talk about this all the time, how we didn't have the internet. We didn't have the leak pages. Like, we can get into some leaks that have come out over the, the week if you want to talk a little bit about that. <laughs> dive in. But yeah. we didn't have that growing up. Like, it was, you either saw it in the store first on a shelf, or you saw it in the magazine, yep. one or the other. And so, you know, opening up the magazine or the catalog to these pages full of the, the insectoid stuff is like, I remember that. And I remember divers, when divers came out, just sticking in my brain. Yeah. Whole, Something too that I did for the for all these images is I punched them up like the the um the color saturation. 
so that we could really feel that 90s black light vibe looking at the images of the sets so that they weren't flat mm. and i don't like flat images you know being a graphic artist sure i like the bright colors we like uh so we like layers they're, they're, they're very <laughs> they very they're very powerful images of these sets um which is pretty pretty awesome i liked looking at them while i built this setup <clears throat> oh yeah absolutely um so yeah uh i think that's about all i wanted to say before we get in i mean welcome every of course welcome everyone in the chat we got our our, our regulars jumping in mirko's mm -hmm. here was it mirko mirko did you send me that um that instagram message about saying we should have done a trilogy with the explorians starting with them because the explorians came first and then these two were clearly op opposed to the explorians uh, it might have been hit. someone sent me a, a message about that which would have been kind of a cool idea a trilogy a space trilogy <laughs> if you will <laughs> A 2024 Facebook trilogy. Yeah. Um, speaking of speaking of um, you know backstory on this, I did put the Brickopedia backstory um, on the description so that you can see that quickly from the video. Perfect. If you want, you can just scroll down. It should be right there. Yeah. So to get your little tidbits of info, I covered a very brief synopsis of actually the story behind these guys in our last video last week with the UFO yeah. because. That's where I gathered most of the information was from there and from the actual insectoid. So I'm not going to dig too much into the lore this time around, partially because I couldn't find my notes <laughs> and partially because most of it was covered in our last video. So, but we'll, we'll get into the sets. We'll talk about how it all links up and connects and stuff like that. Um, uh, let's see. Retro had a comment. I wanted to pull up. Oh, planet Hollox, a hollow planet. Yeah. Um, that was the planet that these guys, the ufo crashed and evolved into the the um i wonder if the, i wonder if the hollow part of the planet is like a nest that's kind of what the descriptions made it sound like like maybe not quite at first but the deeper they kind of got into it the the more they disturbed these big creatures that lived in this big kind of underground hollow nest area yeah yeah, kind of wild. I mean, it's a great science fiction. I mean, it would make a great TV show. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'd watch, I'd watch the heck out of that. It's a nice cross between like Independence Day and Starship Troopers, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy. The, helmet, the helmets are super cool too. Oh man, aren't they? It's cool because they still have a slightly similar shape to the original UFO, but they bubbled out a little bit and they've gone transparent. So it's mm -hmm. like. Yeah, you can kind of still see those similarities creeping in from their original form, basically. Like, really cool stuff. Um, yeah. Gypsy Moth, legendary, says Mirko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Gypsy Moth is, uh, is a BA, for sure. Um, cool. One of the cooler Lego minifigs that came out back then. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty sick. <laughs> but Are you yeah. ready to jump into yeah. these, then? Yeah, let's jump into the sets. I'm excited, man. All right. First set is uh, polybags. Ooh. Some, See, of these, this... some, some of these were polybags. Some of them had were, were boxes. But um, these are all the polybag images. And this is where it gets a little overwhelming if you're looking to collect insectoids. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you really want to go polybags. You know, sometimes I don't necessarily say that all the polybags <laughs> are main release. <clears throat> You know, but if you really want to get into it and get all of these, there's a lot of them. And some of them are kind of hard to find. Some of them have exclusive minifigs on them, too. Um, yeah, they do. Pull that up real quick. Which one had the exclusive? There was one of these little guys. Yeah, uh, Mosquito has a unique minifig only included in that set. And the Megatax. Is that it? Megatax? Yeah. That's a unique minifig. And the Cannon Booster. That has one unique minifigure as well. So three out of the four have exclusive figs. Yeah. I so know. Like, you want to try and get all these guys? Like you can pull them up on Brick, like we were talking about Brickopedia. The lineup of these guys just goes on and on and on. Yeah. It's, it's all like, these different. It's like 10 or 15 of them. Yeah. Yeah. They went completely bonkers with the prints on these guys. Yeah, they went they they went over the top, which was which was good. Absolutely. It's tricky though when you're trying to collect them all, or you don't know which one you got because this one's slightly variation of that one, and it's like there's no real like uniform 
it's like, oh, there's no like foot soldier. Like almost every set has a unique mini in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I appreciate it. I'd rather Lego lean too heavily into the prints, too heavily into the unique minifigs than not enough. So right. a lot of cool like little Android characters in this theme too. Yeah, these are all these are all great little sets. I mean, yeah, like you said, a really consistent, very nice color scheme going through all these. They all look really nice together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What's that fun, the little antenna with the radar on the end? Uh, I don't know what that part's called, but I, I, know, that. I know that I know that it came. I know that it came out with these guys. Didn't it? That was a new part with for them, wasn't it? I, be I believe it was. And in my brain, it's like the it's it's the equivalent to the orange saw from uh the ice planet yeah like that because you can attach it to that little you know gun piece and use it as a little radar thing and i don't know man it's a such a cool piece yeah it is i really enjoy it i like the 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 what is it the volt the volt stone mm. that thing is super cool too yep yep I I appreciate the incorporation of the energy source, right? The bolt stones. Same with like life on Mars. I mean, it's a pretty con common theme throughout Lego to have these cool energy crystals that power power the drives and stuff like that. Rock Raiders, right? Energy yep. crystals. <clears throat> um, and that's why I appreciated uh, that was a big feature in Lego City Space of twenty this year. Was it this year already? Yeah, man, we're moving through. Uh, when they included those energy sources with the batteries and stuff and the transparent blue kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. I'm glad they kept that tradition up through, even through Lego city. So I, I like seeing that. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So those are the, uh, poly bags. Cool. Good. <laughs> Good lineup of poly bags, man. It looks yeah. like there's all, all there. There's alt builds. Is that what we're looking at on each poly bag? No, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I think, yeah. The little, the little yeah. tiny one. <laughs> they have them in the side. They're all yeah, little little all builds <laughs> in the sides. Yeah, beautiful. The production value ten out of ten. And then these were these were more of the uh, mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, they I want to say uh, six nine four two and six nine zero three both had a box version and a poly bag version. I think it may, it may have just been oh. one or one or the other. Yeah, I think I think the are you talking about. <laughs> The bug blaster? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't tracking. Yes, I believe the bug, bug blaster has one, a little box. I, I feel like I've seen it, but I, I could be wrong. Um, I think also the Cosmic Creeper has another exclusive minifig on it. I think it does. Uh, according to our... And that, our and, that's, set. and that, my friends, is the equivalent to the ant. That's the Perfect. ant of yep. the insectoids world, okay? That You need like 50 to 70 of these. <laughs> <laughs> right crawling up out of the earth <laughs> welcome yeah. steve steve just joined us um octavian um also just jumped in hey welcome good to have you guys yeah magnets in this theme too tricer yeah. yes a lot of here's, magnets here's a fun fact about the magnets in this theme the stickers that you put on top of the vault stones were magnetic and yeah. so the little ants and the little mandibles on a lot of the ships and the little legs and things that would pick these things up. So they would kind of use them like mine, like almost like mining, right? You could just gather them up on the vehicles because they mined these things. So, um, yeah. So, so as, as you kind of go through here, I got to make this a point too. Um, just oh, looking yeah. back here at the poly bags, mm -hmm. the one is called mosquito. Mm -hmm. uh, but each one of them, you know, like kind of represent, some kind of a bug yeah which is pretty awesome and some are blatantly like named mosquito right <laughs> bug blaster cosmic creeper like that's the ant like you mentioned just a second yeah ago. yeah that's the <laughs> ant and then these other ones are probably like you know the zoo gnats. evil <laughs> gnats or yeah gnats flies or something weevils. like this <laughs> uh, top tier name zoo weevil <laughs> retro space coats yeah i agree that's hilarious man yeah it's a little weird Steve, uh, yeah, so you just jumped in. Um, still have all the pieces from every set in the series in this collection. Awesome, nice. man. That's Steve, awesome. You gotta, we count on Steve to come in here and, and flex his collection because he's he's the old school guy. So yep. it's good to have you here, man. I had a um, lot of these when they came out. I might have had one. 
when they came out. I have most of them now. I have all the big ones, and I, I'm scrapping around with some of the polybag ones. I'm trying to find some of that stuff. I always try to pick it up at conventions and stuff like that, right? Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty much close to a full collection. I think Jose mentioned he's got the whole wave as well, which is cool. Luckily, they're not madly expensive. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some of the rare figs and stuff might be a little more, but the whole as a whole, they're not terribly expensive. They're not a hugely popular theme, so... Kind of like Life on Mars, you can pick some of these up for fairly decent prices still. Although after we talk about them, now everybody's going to go grab them. <laughs> right. No, we're not that. We're not quite that popular yet. Mirko um, says Mondays are like AA meeting. Same faces. Everyone has something to add. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, these are these are some pretty awesome little. Um, little sets right here i had the cosmic creeper mm, mm -hmm. um and the uh, bug blaster yeah let's talk about those eyeball pieces for a second dude those things are awesome beautiful color the dark green transparent uh and yeah. it comes in the the neon green as well here or neon yeah. yellow i guess whatever you want to call that but yeah both colors so yeah those real cool domes they use for eyes on most of uh, many of the ships have these on them um yep. Yeah. And that's a fun piece they have stuck to it. The circular blue, like, um, bracket. Yeah, bracket pod. Yeah, Over they have, a, like, a dark gray and blue and maybe black, I think, of those. Yeah, I mean, this is, there might be a white one, too. I think there's a white one. Mm, I think, yeah, later they're probably good. Because they, they do one. the, um, they did, like, the, did the, the, uh, the chrome one. They did a chrome dome, like, uh, that, that was in, like, some of the space, city space stuff. Yeah, the spaceport. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we'll we'll be covering that in the future as well. Um, that's that's on the list of things to talk about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. There was a couple different colors there for that too. Mm -hmm. So uh, good pieces. Um, yeah, I love the like the who someone mentioned earlier in the comments the um, the the big plastic wheels. The blue in blue is really fun to get that color. That was retro. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Good sets. Uh, I think I have most of these ones now. Uh, maybe not the Weevil. Man, I love these minifigs. I love that there's the dark green transparent guys, and then the like the the neon green ones. Like the well, they're, yeah, the, I think they're they're variants of uh, of species. Oh, potentially, yeah. I, I, I like I'm, that. I'm not I'm not for sure on that, but I think that that's the, the way of it. Sure. It potentially could be, or at the very least, like classes, right? Like these guys are pilots, mm -hmm. those are fighters, something like that, right? Kind of like in an ant colony, right? Where you have the different people assigned, or people, <laughs> the different creatures assigned to different things. Um, so here we have another mosquito slash fly. Yeah. We have a hornet. Mm -hmm. And another fly <laughs> of some kind. Yeah. Beta buzzer, mosquito, the hornet scout. That's fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's a yeah. The that's hornet, a cool one. That hornet scout's bigger than you'd realize here too. Yeah, that, you is. see that pod, you know, on the front here. If that's the front, and then yeah. it looks like is that killer or not? Uh, is that um gypsy moth? That's gypsy moth, isn't it? I think sitting so. Yeah. In, yeah, sitting in the back, on the back side of that. So, yeah. It's a, a fairly substantial size set, even though it looks small in the picture here. But, um, yeah, and then it looks like, I mean, this almost looks like a flying almost ant creature or something like that, right? On the bi mm -hmm. blaster. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, these wing pieces are super fun. Oh, yeah. I love those, especially the bigger ones. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's the bigger version of mm -hmm. them. A lot of these little sets had the small ones, but then you get the big ones on like two or three of the sets mm -hmm. later on, the big, the bigger ones. But yeah, they're, yeah. they're cool. I like their connection points with the, uh, compatible with the Aquanaut arms. Yeah. I always did really like those. They always seem to be really strong. Yeah. 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 Especially on these, although some of them would, sometimes a prong would break off, but that's, you know, anything, you know. I think some of those little pronged hinges 
would also have that problem sometimes but yeah i kind of miss the original hatch like with the three or the four prongs because lego doesn't make that piece anymore it's all with the click click joints now yeah and like they're not just they have their click, click a little bulky joints. the clicky joints yeah whatever you want to call them the <laughs> ratchet ratchet joint I, I don't know what you call it but yeah man like they're the hinge the hatch pieces they don't function the same way anymore and they're kind of bulky looking and i don't know it's just a little uh it's a little different well they work um yeah for sure i just miss the old ones uh mm -hmm. but yeah these are good let's see uh we got a couple comments you want to pull yeah up here yeah, there was a there was one. Um, I think it was Octavian said that these were never available in Europe. None of them. Uh, where was that? I'm pretty really? sure that's what he said. I'd be surprised the whole theme like this. We never had these three in Europe, so okay. maybe they were just missing a few. Some of the. I was gonna say there. There's one set that was only released in Germany. Oh really? Do you remember yeah. which one that was? Yeah, it's okay. not. It's, I think it's it's in the next slide. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. So here's the here's the set in uh, Bywing Blaster. You get the droid now with that clear helmet. Mm -hmm. This is where you're gonna start seeing the little droids, the androids pop up. And so they had these UFO had them, and so they continued the tradition into the insectoid line with uh, some of these as well. So it's you get another one on the uh, Hornet Scout down there. It's the one driving. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's fun to see those guys. Those guys start popping up kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, do we have... I think we got exclusive figs on some of these, too. Let me see. I think there's exclusive figs on each set, man, to be honest with you. Not quite every single Almost. one, but... <laughs> Almost. So, actually, the Bi-Wing Blaster is not... There's not an exclusive one on that one. Or... Uh, yeah, actually, these three don't. These are like the only three that don't have exclusive ones. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> They're just filler sets. Oh, I think I know what set you're talking about from Germany. Dang it. Yeah, you want to get uh, into it? Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's space. a space fighter. Yeah, I was going to say space fighter because that's one I definitely do not have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it, it, at least that's what was what was said online that, is that that set was only released in Germany. Okay, I'm not was sure it released why. in the big value collector's bucket? Is that why or no? Uh, no, I don't thing? think so. I don't think so. There was one or two little sets that were like the uh, J Japan, um, like cereal, like oh yeah or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but I plugged those in anyway, as well as the um, Space Spider that was Got only released it. in Germany. Yeah, I like the space spider. It does look a little different than the other ones, though. Slightly, you know. It's, but it's got I mean, it still it still has that it still has that vibe, man. Yeah, I like the 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 dome on the back is kind of being the uh, the back of the spider there. I can't remember the thorax. Is that what they call it? I don't know. But the back of the spider. I and think then, so. <laughs> I'm just throwing word bug words out at this point. <laughs> uh, it doesn't quite have enough legs to be a spider, but you know, we'll I let we'll let it pass. It was the '90s. Yeah. <laughs> i like it though i think it's a cool set yeah it's 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 pretty cool it's not um, a unique fig though it's um, not as cool as the sonic stinger though dude sonic stinger is where we're getting like really nice design yeah like that's where it's starting to killer. really come home yeah that's a killer bug ship right there man that's like it's amazingly good. structured shape the you know yeah, the dynamics of it the whole the whole build is awesome it's a good looking ship for sure. It's like Sonic a moth. Stinger. It's like a moth. Yeah, it's got kind of a moth vibe. Yeah. Because it's got that long, like you called them the 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 alien the bug butts or whatever, the light up back part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's when are you, you now we're seeing these parts. So so for uh, most people probably already know this, but for anyone who doesn't or didn't get their hands on any of these, that back of that bug would light up you put the batteries in that dark gray piece and the sides of it would do these cool like undulating lights <laughs> what um, what really kind of rubbed me the wrong way was that it was orange right i think i remember you mentioning that before yeah. that it quite it, didn't quite it, no it should have been like the line the 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 um trans neon green trans mm. neon uh the, the light green you know what i'm saying 
Or the casing over it. Yeah, instead yeah. of that. I mean, that would have been great in Rock Raiders. Mm. You know? They could orange, or like, yeah. Yeah, like they an Ice have, Planet or something. Yeah, or Ice Planet <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, I thought I always thought that the orange on that was weird. It's a little different for sure. I, You know what's impressive about this theme is they mixed transparent dark green and the transparent neon green, and it works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't really with, think to do that. <laughs> with blue. With blue, yeah. With standard blue. Yeah, and then and it transparent looks, it, look, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, no, I really like it. I, I really do, you know. And the box art's fun, too. It's that classic oh, yeah. over-the-top mix of photograph, photorealistic foreground images with some crazy kind of computer-generated space storms going on. With the Matrix on the floor. Just straight up the Matrix going on, a Tron Legacy just happening in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, it came out. When is this? Uh, we said earlier, 1998. 1998, so, yeah. Yeah, The Matrix came out the, the next year. So, like, <laughs> exactly the same vibe as, as some of that mm -hmm. stuff, for sure. Yeah. Honestly, that's pretty great. Um, It's an ugly <laughs> space. It's retro space codes. It's an ugly planet. A bug planet. <laughs> Quote from Starship Troopers. Love it. That's one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Uh, Brickativity asks if those uh, light up elements last. Um, yes. I, can, I cannot, I cannot, you know, confirm or deny that. So I no longer have one. Uh, they do last. I mean, if you pick any of these up, unless it was like dumped in water, if you pick any of these up, they'll still turn on. They'll still work. I'm sure you could probably take them apart and clean them too. And they would work just fine. I've done that with, you know, that's what's nice I mean, about Lego. I've Electrical components are easy to clean. Yeah, and Lego did a good job using good quality electrical components. So I've cleaned corrosion off of some of these and got them back to work too. So a mm -hmm. little restoration can go a long way on these these old electric parts. There were three different settings, just like uh, I think, I don't know if the Ra Rock Raiders, I think they only had one or two settings on their laser, but I can't remember. But there's three buttons yeah. on this one, I believe, and there's three buttons on the uh, spaceport rocket packs as well. So they liked giving you some variety there with the like patterns. I don't remember. Did you remember if this had sound as well? Was it light and sound? I don't think it had sound. I can't. I, I want to say it. I can't, I can't remember. remember. Don't hold. Don't hold that to me. Right? Yeah, I'm trying. Actually, to, I'm trying Steve to know. Steve, do these make sounds? These sonic stinger asses. So I just I just pulled up brick set and on the big value collector's bucket there's a advertisement that says light and sound on it. So I think they made a wacky sound too. Yeah, Jose said they they make sounds too. Okay, I I, I can't remember. It's, it's been dude, a long time since yeah, I dude, I was like I was like 18 <laughs> when that happened. Yeah, or 17. So. Yes, they do. Retro space coats. Thanks. Thought I'd never had one of these sound bricks. Octavian. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Three buttons, two lights, and sound. Very cool. <laughs> Bleep bloop. Yeah. <laughs> BJ, thanks. Cool, cool. Yeah, no, that's uh, Sonic Stingers up there. I'd probably put it in the top three. Top three of these as far as design-wise. Maybe... Maybe even the top two. Like, that's one of the I best design ships. I don't know about that, man. Yeah, we're coming up on some good stuff. Oh, the best. All right, all right. Yeah, oh, the cricket. That thing, the grasshopper one. The, the grasshopper <laughs> one is the dopest Lego set. That might be top one in this whole thing. Dude, yes. With the shock <sighs> and everything. Oh, God, that thing's awesome. The ball, the bulb, bulb, bulbous eyes coming off the side. The, the way they <laughs> connected those on the, the hinge, too. Mm -hmm. Just gave it that buggy, weird eyeball and the antennas coming off the top there like that, man. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's this good. One, this one is absolutely sick, dude. It is. It's very nice. It's got some good minifigs. Another, another one of those little droids harvesting the vault stone. I like his little pod that pops out here. He hovers over. It looks like a little hovercraft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. awesome. It's got, you know, the big wheels, the big legs in the back, the shock absorbers. Um, and those, those were very effective because the, the, the back legs, if I remember correctly, are on one of those pull pin, let's like a pin, like yep. a Technic pin yep. so that they would, they would bounce in the back, mm -hmm. you know, over the top of, uh, yeah. you know, rocks or whatever, which is pretty rad. 
you also get a very beautiful uh, view of the artwork along the back there. Mm -hmm. It's a little bigger, a little wider shot there. You, it looks like there's some glowing vault stones in the terrain. Yep. Um, so that's a really cool shot. Some craters and lightning going on. Um, so that's really nice to see on there as well. Of course, you get the printed long, elongated windshield in dark green. Which dark is green, amazing. yep. Yep. You got some nice printed slope pieces on it. You have the printed tiles. Of course, you get the the magnets on the, the magnetic stickers on the, <clears throat> the volt stones they're picking up here. You get a couple of those in the set. And may I add those funky little hatches that come on the uh, some of the uh, aqua zone stuff. Yep. In, in dark green. In transparent dark green. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a phenomenal set here. Um, just yeah, killer set. Everything going for it. They put the space hoses, <laughs> those tubes along the front there. Mm -hmm. Like you get everything you want in a space set in this set here. Uh, yeah, there's not, I mean, and then you can see, so along the top here, you can see that little uh, hinged piece. Those two lock uh, right behind the transparent kind of area where they're holding the vault stones and you get those funny little radar antenna pieces stuck onto it. Yeah. Those open up and the thing inside comes out. And then on the back, right behind it, if you hinge that piece up with the little blue attached modified tile, you can drop the uh, hovercraft right inside of it and it locks in place with that going over the back of the seat. So it's all nested and really nice. And then you can hold more gear and stuff in the back of the bug behind the long windshield piece. So there's just so much going on here, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, really Jose, nice. Jose said uh, this this uh, sealed is going for 141 to 185 range. Which isn't, I mean, that's, for a sealed set. That's not that's, bad. That's what I was saying. Like, these aren't really mad expensive not when you compare it to something like pirates or castle or even some of the classic space stuff you know it's like you're getting these sealed at one one something even some mm -hmm. town stuff is more expensive sealed you know because this isn't a it's not a tiny set this is a fairly decent sized set yeah it's got large parts on it which makes it bigger the the part count is it 250 even um, which is kind of fun. Two non it, non exclusive minifigs. It's amazing what they could do back in the day for two hundred and fifty pieces versus what they could do now for two hundred and fifty pieces. <laughs> right, right, because they weren't afraid to build build big molds. Right, they have these big molds, the big wheels, the big legs. I know, but those those some of those big parts were significant for making a theme stand out on its own. Oh, I agree. No, you know, the way it's that like the, it's like the it's like the chrome grill drill and the brown casing in yeah. Rock Raiders. Mm -hmm. Only only yeah. things they've ever come out in, right? But phenomenal parts that really made Rock Raiders what Rock Raiders was. I agree, and you know it's interesting you mentioned <laughs> that because new themes today it, we have more new molds and more new parts than ever before, but mm -hmm. none of them are distinct like you're saying, yeah. like. You're getting these, you know, little race cars, the the little uh, speed, what's it called? Um, the collection of race cars, different realistic race cars. I'm trying to read, speed champions. Mm -hmm. With the speed champions, it seems like they're always releasing like five new parts per kit, right? Yeah. But they're little, little tiny pieces that just help maybe smooth out the chassis of the car or whatever it is. Lego's formula for making new themes, like you pointed out, was completely different in the 90s. You know, they would yeah. bring in the old pile of bricks that we all got in most themes, but then they would add, like you said, these big, very standout pieces and build a theme around those those parts. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just like, oh, we have 32 different wheel wells and, oh, we came out with another door mold, you know, but it's not a specific theme-based piece. It's just another mold used for all these other sets. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a different world we're living in now for sure. It's kind of interesting to think about but yeah yeah this this thing is stellar yeah i love this if this isn't the the best one of this theme it's the second best it's gonna have some i mean you gotta put up a real fight to get better than this guy here yeah, i also like that it's like i'm saying i mean i give this set a 10 out of 10 all day yeah yeah <laughs> I like Period. also that it's a exclusively pretty much it's just a ground vehicle. It drives around on the ground. Like there's no flying bits except for maybe the little hover jumper thing. But like, yeah, so it's it's a wheel-based vehicle, which is fun. 
All right, let's check out. Let's check out. We've got we got two more big big ones here. Let's check them out, and then we'll do a comparison and a rate. Okay. So the oh, Celestial yeah. Stinger is like the big the bigger ship. Now this Which one's is, a little weird. Because... It is weird. It looks <laughs> great, okay, but it's weird because the Stinger is on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's got two different sets of wings and some weird legs on the back. It kind of almost looks like the head of maybe a, a beast or a bug, but not quite a completed bug. Um, I like what's going on for sure. It looks like a spaceship. It's definitely that voice. Yeah, this I'm, I'd like to think in the lore that this was the first attempt. They had their ships from the UFO line. They ripped them all apart, put them back together. Like, we need to make them look like bugs. Bring in some elements from the planet. Put this together. This was their first go. It's like, it kind of yeah. looks like a bug, but it's clearly a spaceship still. It's, it's <laughs> still a spaceship. Yeah. A lot of good parts, though, man. They loaded this oh, yeah. just like the grasshopper thing. Yeah. big The big wings, the little wings, the uh, trans-neon green uh, domes, mm. which are great. Um, those little, those little tiny quarter windscreens that yep. came on all the mag racers back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I like those <laughs> plenty of orbs, plenty of the, uh, antennas, the trans neon antennas, plenty of bolt um, stones. Yeah. Bolt stones. Well, you also got the, did you mention the fuselage area down? So right behind the stinger piece, mm -hmm. you get that, see that angular, piece where the vault stone sticking into the circle yeah. that's you know that's a piece that came out on um explorians that's yes. one of their main cockpit pieces yeah it's and the so, cockpit piece where the lens would come down in between yeah yeah so that's cool they nested it in there like that and gave that kind of a nice sleek you know front to the ship there i like yeah that. it was good i like you how can also have... you can also notice on this the three the three different buttons on mm -hmm. the on the perfect yeah. thing very nice shot of that for sure. Uh, well, and to kind of back up the the UFO, you know, storyline, you have the UFO panels there, two along mm -hmm. the front, and two coming off as wings there, in dark gray, right? The mm -hmm. the little like structural wing parts. Yeah. And I don't know, there might be a couple on the last insectoid one, but they don't come in that many insectoid sets. So no, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. There's, not there's on none one. on that planetary prowler no yeah, yeah i so. think i think those are probably the only ones in this theme or on the set the dark so, and the dark gray so i'm sticking to my lore that this was the first you see you you even see ufo coming through on the camouflage here like yeah you do, kind of, parts. you do kind of it almost, it's almost like they took a bunch of the insect ones and just like made one big conglomerate of a ship yeah 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 with the parts right it's either the uh, first attempt or the scrap together. Hmm. This could, yeah, yeah, because because they were continually being attacked by giant bugs. I mean, yeah. this could be like a like a like a last ditch effort to get out of an area, and they just threw this thing together to leave. <laughs> like we yeah. got to get back home, build this. Out and go. <laughs> this one comes with uh, two of the androids and uh, one insectoid. Yeah, minifigure yeah. collector says, "Is this the only set that has two? Gigabots, which are the actual names of these droids. Yes, um, I believe. I so. think it is. Yeah, I, I, I believe so. There might. Mm, yeah, I think so. Uh, and also the, the the gigabots, the two two of those guys are the common common minifig, and the, <laughs> the the pilot is a unique minifig. Just to throw that out there, <laughs> another exclusive fig. Octavian uh, is saying the spider has two as well, so we haven't I shown was, that one yet. I was wondering, I, yeah, I was wondering about the last big one because I think the, they have the gigabots are like the bitches of uh, the insectoid world. Yeah, the worker bees, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, and they're the same in honestly, they're kind of the same. <laughs> That's a hilarious way to put it. <laughs> they're, they're the same in uh, the the explorians too, the little yeah. android guys, uh, or even um, uh, Spe Spireus, where they're just like the workers. They're the mechanic guys. They're kind of the servants, right? Which yeah. is a fun way. Humanity thinks about what an AI creature would be when in when in reality all of us know we'd actually be serving them, but whatever. It's okay. <laughs> we can we can have our fantasies while we well while we live here. <laughs> well while we're still alive. But uh yeah, yeah. I mean 
this is cool. I, a lot of the, I really like the transparent helmets also just the clear. Yeah. The standard one. Yeah, man. It's, it's they are fun cool. stuff, dude. Um, the cool thing about those clear helmets is, is you can have the clear helmet with the clear lens. Mm-hmm. And you can create yep. the full, full on clear helmet unit. Yeah, yeah. Of course, no. the, the Gigabots and the Androids didn't come with the lens on them. It was just like face, no, no mask. Yeah, it's just yeah. like a weird head and a clear helmet. Yeah, well, and I like, um, I like the the Gigabots. Is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. I like having multiple. So, so when you have this set with two, the next one has two, and then a couple of them have one or two, or just one. A couple sets have one on them. Yeah. When you get the whole collection, you're going to end up with, you know, six or seven of these guys running around, picking up stones and, you know, doing their little maintenance work and flying the little drones and stuff. So I, I like having a consistent figure, right, to kind of build out the the kind of the, the background, but the troops, if you will, or whatever. So yeah, it's fun to have that. I think it's worthy to note before we jump on to the next one that these, it looks like to me that the pods with these little domes in the front, uh -huh. do they stick to the side here? It looks like one's stuck to the side and the other one's flying. So those I are think the pods. So. Yeah, know, it looks like it. Bots. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. So it all comes, that's, that's a nice way to explain why the alternate name for that would be Space Swarm, right? Because those will come off of it. So if you had two or even three of these ships, you're going to have a swarm of these little flyers coming off. So yeah, I like that. Octavian said they stick in there with magnets. Perfect, dude. Yes. Oh, and this might be the only theme that came with those, those, um, you know, the clips for the magnets that were, they weren't the main swivel ones. They were the ones that you could stick to the bases of things. Yeah, they only come in very few colors, and I think yeah, it was like the the two by two square plate with like the little mm -hmm. knob knob holders. Yeah, but it was like reverse, so it would stick on the bottom of a plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, not the top, because they had the ones on the top. There's one in like um the Indiana or the the Adventurers Desert Temple when the ruby gets spun around in the back. That's how they do it. They stick it to a magnet like that. Yeah, a caveat said it's the reverse ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I believe which are pretty cool. This might be the cool. only theme that Aren't comes in blue? blue. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now, but I think this is the only theme that came in blue for that piece. Yeah. Not to get all you know carried away with a random piece, but um let's see here. Mirko's asking what was the last theme that had magnets? Are we talking about space? Or just all together, because I mean that's I don't... that's a hard comparison to do real quick in my head. <laughs> I mean, it's trains. If we're talking about the little magnets, it's the trains. Um, that's the last time because they still have magnets. Lego City has these big clunky magnets, or they did a couple of years back. So they still use some magnets. But if we're talking about the OD little holder mini magnets. It's going to be uh, I believe trains. Yeah, to have those little bags on them. So, yeah. some random city train set, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right, let's yeah, look. Yeah, this is a. Let's, I don't. I don't give this one too high a rating for design, no. but it's a fun set. <laughs> it's a cool looking ship, and it has cool parts. That's the main. And it thing. has cool parts. Uh, awesome seven parts. out of ten on this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Here we now go. This, now this guy. What I love about this is like they threw in like a little ground base just for kicks. And that's yeah. a decent size little head, like little outpost. Yeah. This thing is massive. This amazing. <clears throat> I was able to get a hold of this actually um, several years back. And I think I have the box too. Um, it is, it is incredible. It's so cool. Yeah, I love the uh, I love the dark green uh, trans uh, saucer pieces in the back that are printed. Mm -hmm. Another nod to their home planet. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's it's, it's, it's it's technically um, it's technically missing a leg on both sides. Oh, sure. For the the spider aspect of things. Yeah, for it to be an arachnoid. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I like about this is the big back legs are 
operated by the gigabots as cranes that pick up the volt stones with magnets on the ends of them which is yeah super cool concept this it's is also so good <laughs> this is also the only one that comes with the little mini legs in green oh right and the note like the the little grabber up front which yeah. also picks up the volt stones with the cool lantern piece mm -hmm. so it's like there's like little fingers on the end of it yep yep and you can put it you can place it in there or you can have it because there's a magnet on the nose as well so you can clip it to there um and then the, this also has the light up stinger piece in it it's tucked in there so it also yeah. makes the same yeah. sounds and light vibration and whatnot right because so for, so for the front of this thing you see those four gray legs along the, the large gray legs out in front yeah and the the transparent windscreen um next to that yeah that separates so that whole chunk slides out on those old um actually those aren't old pieces because they still have those the little track pieces okay it slides out and so you get a sec so the the main base the back of the the thing can sit on its wheels and the front of that can come out as like a, a, a creepy spider walker bug with a and then and then the back of it would be the the stinger piece with that lights up does that make sense so it separates and that's kind of cool yeah so you can kind of leave the main base i there, didn't have i didn't frame. know that because i never had this set but i know i know that it 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 looks awesome but yeah. i never had this one yeah dude it's really cool um and so that's a cool function of it again like i said that whole little main base back there which also almost kind of looks like a bug because they put it up on those those structural pieces that look kind of like legs yeah it kind of almost looks like a another like chunky bug walking behind but uh yeah that's a decent sized base as well and and then there's a down in the corner the bottom right you can barely see it here there's a vehicle that can be like put into the ship as well on the other side because there's 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 the a dark green transparent windscreen on the one side and then it's open on the other see that yeah so there's a yeah. place <laughs> for that vehicle to land in the other side this is uh this is the box art um, for it. And I believe the front cover of the instructions and on both yeah. that little bottom right-hand corner, that little vehicle is completely yeah. almost cut off. Isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. You can't see it. Cause you can only see like a slope and then the handlebars. <laughs> yeah. But that thing goes up inside. Uh, that's yeah. a whole thing. And then, you know, there's this flying, the little flyer with the gigabot flying along the top here. That thing, I believe, I'm trying to remember. I think that might just that. I think that docks at the main, the little radar bug in the back, not on the main ship. I think that docks along the back. I could be wrong. Someone could correct me who has the set that's actually played with it in the last year. <laughs> but I believe that's how that works. Lots of cool prong hinges with all the antennas on them here. And then some of the tiles and things like that. So there's lots of functionality and moving pieces on this. Yeah, the um, the antennas are connected to this the same way that they're connected on the uh, Solar Snooper and the Space Police. Yes, which is a great way to do things. I really enjoy the way that looks. I do too. Um, I'm pulling this up real quick to see if we got exclusive. Of course, of course yeah. nowadays you can do that same thing with like 20 different pieces. <clears throat> sure, yeah, now it's, yeah, it's a pretty, yeah, you got all kinds of different clip clips and joints and things you can you can run on that to put those antennas in basically the same way but it was a fun way to do it back then it was kind of a, a a very cool piece the little three prong with the stud on the back very very fun piece to get a hold of back in the day so it's weird i mean so the one weird thing <laughs> you're gonna you're not gonna believe this only has 437 pieces yeah that's crazy that's crazy. And it only comes with four minifigs. Um, but the two non gigabots are both exclusive to this set. Of course they are. <laughs> so yeah, I, I if you pull this theme up, like we were talking about, if you pull this theme up, I'm gonna count out loud the different minifigs here, because I've got a list a line of them right here. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13 different types of minifigs with these sets. Does that include the Gigabot? That includes Gigabot. Because 
because he's still one, but there's multiples of him. And there's multiples of some of the other ones. Some of these other ones have two or three of them. But we're just <laughs> talking about exclusive different heads or prints. Some yeah. of these have the same torsos. Some of them have some of the armor and the same helmets and things. But they're, we're talking about either it's a printed leg or a printed head that's different. You're yeah. looking at 13 different types of minifig in this theme, which is an insane amount of minifigs. Considering what the the blue coats have two, the red coats have right. two. Pirates have yeah. a nice selection, but like <laughs> for a whole theme to have two or three, I mean four or five is great. Falcons have one. Right. Uh, Black knights have like two. <laughs> you know, <laughs> royal knights had three or four, maybe. Fright knights had a couple, but yeah. So this one just went overboard on an entirely new level. Yeah, it's a it's a it's probably a top notch uh, space theme in my book. Yeah, so let's compare these. I, I what are we looking at? I mean, it's, it's ten out of ten one. here on this. Yeah, ten out of ten. It hits on everything. It's it it's uh it's functionality, it's design, the whole works. I've always I always loved this set when I looked at it in the catalogs as a kid. Like it was just it. It's really cool. You pointed out that those green green um, mandibles up in the front here are mm -hmm. green. The transparent green, like trans transparent neon or transparent dark green. Yeah, that's crazy to get a yeah. piece like that in transparent green. The only set that it comes on like that. So that's Ever. a pretty that's a pretty cool piece um, to get like that. So I like how the uh, that little triangle piece that's printed on some of the two by two tiles and along the back of this thing. You see that mm -hmm. little logo. It's reminiscent of the UFO logo. It has that same kind of geometric shape there. Yeah, it does. So that's but kind of fun. Like, it's like a it's like a bug face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different, but it still kind of has that again hinting back towards you know the the origin of these guys. So yeah, I mean to recap all this stuff, and then let's uh, let's rate the the top four of these guys. But um, well, I would say I would say this would have to be. Number one or number two. Um, this is, I don't know what that five is. or six probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one or two, top right two, here. Th that's definitely three. a ten out of ten, right there for sure. Yeah. Um, the uh, Sonic Stinger is top notch. What's nice about that is I think the shape it might it might kill all all of them in just the simplicity and the the, the shape of it. Well, in comparison, know, in comparison to this one, those are those two are probably neck and neck. You talking about you talking about the uh, the the planetary prowler and the yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Those two are like neck. Yeah, those two are probably tied for like two, or no, I might tie those at first and put the big arachnid base on, as second. Yeah, right behind them. These yeah. uh, the biwing blaster. That one's pretty good. Yeah, what's cool about it is like it has that little bug that sits on the back, but yeah. as a as a alone sitting down there, the bottom, the base of the ship, the main one, that's a nice design too. And I really like the use of those castle, uh, what do you call the corner pieces <laughs> as <Yeah>. the jaws? <laughs> that's great. That's a really great. Use yeah, of it's it's almost like it's almost like a termite type bug. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect description. It's totally a termite. Um, and we have to give love to the ant guy. Oh, I here. forgot. That. Dude, the ant is like three, dude. Ant is like, yeah. Ant, this is a great set. It also makes use of that fun, um, like, hitch, like the, the wagon hitch piece. Yeah. That, that was that down was, in front there. That was used, that was used quite a bit um, back in classic space, though. That's and, true. That's you know, true. The they, 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 they threw those in everywhere. Its head is connected to that, so I think it moves up and down. Like yeah, that. the head comes. The head. The head comes up, and I believe, if I, if I'm not mistaken, it might turn to set the. It like opens up and swivels down to drop the, um, the bolt stone down stone. below into that little section behind it. Potentially, I can't remember exactly. I do know it, I it lifts up. Either. I just don't remember if it does the other part there. But that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Space jaws. Yeah, retro space coats. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think this is number one. Um, yeah, I think the Sonic Stinger is next. Then the Arachnid base, 
and then we'll just trickle down from size there. Then it's the ant. Yeah. I might even put the ant above the arachnid just because it's so clean looking and it looks so much like an ant. But anyway, those are the top four. I, I think that's all we need to really. Yeah, the rest yeah. of them, they're they're all good, really fun to get a hold of. But they're all kind of similar at that point. They're just like hovercrafts and things like that. So well, let's admire this one here for one more minute. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, and I'll, I'll kind of <laughs> recap some of the lore. Um, these guys were, you know, if you didn't get to watch the last episode, I, I go into a little bit of depth about where these guys came from. I have some planet names and things like that. I'm not going to get too crazy with it. But basically, these guys are the UFOs. Once they crashed on a hostile planet, couldn't live on the surface. So they tunneled down underneath, uh, ended up finding a second atmosphere kind of down there. Its own, um, you know it even has its own sun and the sun down underneath it's kind of like journey to the center of the earth or even kind of like rock raiders right where there's this underground area um when the sun under there powers the volt stones they start mining these volt stones these giant bugs attack them and so they start disguising their ufo vehicles as these these bugs so they put wings and eyes and things like that so so these these vehicles are not bugs there's no there's no real, from what we can understand, there's no like um, organic matter on them. These are still vehicles, but they're disguised as insects. And they they called these vehicles that are disguised like insects, insectoids, obviously. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they evolved themselves a little bit. Clearly they got some new helmet pieces probably to help them on the surface, you know? Um, and then they, but you can still see a lot of, like we've been talking about this whole video, you can still see throwback callbacks to the ufo line with the domes the dishes and some of the structural pieces they still have the little androids helping them you know some names have changed uh they got a new leader uh draconis whatever his name was was their leader who crashed here then um in, in this series they have a uh, um gypsy moth she takes control of the the faction here uh and um so that's kind of the story behind these guys. Now, we don't really know if they ever got off this planet. Um, oh, and one very notable thing is that many of the leaders of the insectoids are still wearing their Zoltaxan armor in dark gray and black. So yeah. you, you get that real strong connection to the UFO through that. Some of those are noticeable, um, very noticeable, uh, like right here. Yeah. You get On the, uh, the Cosmic Creeper. Mm-hmm. Wearing that out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then Hornet Scout. With uh, yeah, that's Gypsy Moth. She's on that one. So yeah, and then and then both of these, the Sonic Stinger and the Space Spider, they yep, both got their armor on there. Deck, decked out with the armor there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is one of my favorite space pieces. It's such a cool piece of armor. I really, really like it. And it's worthy to know, you know, just for people who may be new to our crazy lore and our our theories and things that we come up with. So Taxon armor uh, also was worn by Ogle. And so we kind of made a connection that before the UFO left their home planet, he came in and kind of conquered them and was known as the cruel overlord that they fought against and then eventually had to escape to land here on the insectoid planet. So, what do you think? What do you think, Jason? Insect Insectoids, good or bad? Uh, it, I, I, mean, think, I, I think it's it, survival. Yeah, it, it, it's weird because in old magazines, there's some some references to the UFO fighting Explorian, and we'd probably consider Explorians to be good guys. Um, they're more research-based, just kind of humanity, right? But uh, these guys, I, if they may have had an origin as being kind of the bad guys, but uh, I would say I agree with you, man. They're surviving here. They're not really... They're not depicted too often fighting anything other than giant bugs, which are just written about. So, yeah, yeah, they're kind of they're kind of a, it's kind of an interesting theme because it's kind of a stranded survival theme. They're not, uh, you know, a lot of their ships are grounded or, you know, they have some some flyers, but they're all open cockpit. It doesn't look like they're doing any like hyper jumps or anything with any of these ships. Yeah. Um, so it's a very interesting theme in that regard, you know. I would probably, if I mixed them with other themes, I would potentially think of them as more of a hostile theme. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Or they could, they could be good guys. They were the they were the rebellion, right? Fighting against whoever was on their original planet. So, 
who knows they might have they might be freedom fighters for all we know they might be good they might be bad they look <laughs> so menacing there's your, there's your there's your answer we didn't answer <laughs> yeah yeah they do look menacing and the ufo were very menacing hardcore they had fighters man they had mm -hmm. a lot of guns they had a lot of firepower they were armored they were they were carrying heavy weapons so that's their origin so I would lean probably towards more hostile than not. Uh, Mirko asks, Jason, you ever do some UFO uh, or this theme uh, as part of your remakes? Oh, yeah, for like some mocks and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. I do not think that I ventured in. It's tricky on something like this because they did it so well. Yeah. It's like, what am I going to add? Like with Space Police 2, I added a base. With Mtron, I added a base, right? With some some of these other themes that are so well done you know it's like wow do i do what i what would i add to this like yeah you can always come up with something but this, i'd this like is, to this is kind of interesting too um i didn't mean to cut you off there jason no I'm no, no you're good you're good um jose said that uh planet ripple nick said they're not enemies instead they are more like explorians and scientists so interesting. scavengers scientists survivors survivors sure belters they're belters yeah they're not really ever <laughs> depicted fighting anyone else not from what i can tell the ufo were yeah for sure but these guys even in not their bio much. like what i can dig up online i don't really see too much animosity towards other current factions you know yeah or um contemporary factions with these octavian guys, so. mentioned there's another insect you could make jason a centipede <laughs> But you need that a lot of those, be, you need would, a lot of those legs. That would look really cool, though. <laughs> really nice hinge pieces to hinge it out. You could hinge it out. You could use the little the little blue wheels instead of the legs too. Just have you could. Just, just sliding along on that. That'd be kind of fun. And, yeah, and possibly a connection of magnets in between. I like it. Yeah, yeah. No, there's there is all obviously going to be some stuff I could add to this theme. I, I'd love to build in these colors. I think it'd be Ooh. fun. It'd be a challenge. You know, Yanogo says uh, you could you could make a hive. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that would Get be those classic be, burps with some weird stuff hanging off of them, and it, you it could opens do some, up. Yeah, you should do some wild shit there, Get buddy. Some pods and things inside there, <laughs> dude. Now, now I'm like, oh man, now I got to write this down. <laughs> This is what the community's for, you know? Yep. Bringing in these ideas. That's sick. I love it. A hive would be amazing. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, but I haven't done anything in either of these themes. I've I've touched a lot of themes, maybe just with one or two of my designs, but I haven't messed around too much with this. So a mm. UFO either. Uh, both of them would be fun to explore for sure, though. I like that. So. Well, that's been another episode of Let's Talk About Lego. The insectoids. Yep. Uh, underrated theme. Well, underrated theme. Better than, it has, better than it has any right to be, to be quite yeah, honest. For sure. <laughs> uh, oh, and of for course, sure. I have to mention that Gypsy Moth was a boss you had to defeat in Lego Racers. The, oh, really? For the PC. Yeah, she had her own track. Yeah. There, there you go again with your, with your uh, <laughs> video game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never even played that game. Gotta love it. Dude, it's like Mario Kart, but Lego, so it's better. <laughs> it was a blast. Me and my brother had a, a blast playing Lego Racers, man. Hours on that game. And it was fun because it was every classic theme from like late 80s to like late 90s. Every yeah. track with pirates and you have the, the skull size schooner in the background and you're driving around. And yeah, it was it was like those arcade games from back then, right? You 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 drive through fantastical worlds in these race car games. Some of them were cooler than like oh yeah. I was I was obsessed with cruising world. Nice. Yeah. The arcade Aww. the arcade version. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Just the, the crazy atmospheres you could get in some of these old PC games or like arcade games back then where you just Yeah. But it just be in the background. Some crazy yeah. lore that no one ever really came up with, but they just created a space back there, you know? So, For sure. Um, Spacer Nate mentioned uh, the D&D &D figs. Um, we, are going to, we are going to wait a week on that uh, because we want to confirm that those are for sure, for sure real. Yeah. Um, some posts were removed uh, from Instagram uh, earlier today and yesterday. 
So we just want to make sure that those are the official ones. If they are, there's a lot to talk about. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and if we can get a, a better confirmation sometime this week, then I think we probably ought to move that in as a, as a talk, just to talk about the set itself plus the minifigs. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, it's D and D, right? It's so, iconic. iconic. Yeah. It's, it's an iconic thing. Um, I'm going to kick myself if I don't get it. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to or not, mm -hmm. but um, I'd love to little, talk about it a little bit. It's a little spendy. People have been complaining about the price, but that's with everything. Yeah. So. Well, that's because it's got the D and D on it. Yeah. You can, you got to pay for that premium yeah. license. <laughs> yeah. You're paying for that license that, that originally sued Lego and changed the dungeon master's castle to the black Knight's castle. If we, See? if we all remember, we let's all remember how history, you know, came to be here. So it is iconic in multiple ways. You know, we're full circle at this point. I mean, and yeah. yeah, we can save that all this talk for the the D and D. We could do a D and D video. I'm down. I, you know, we'll jump into the comments. We'll pull people into to. Yeah, the, it'd be a good it'd be a good filler if if we can get some some solid evidence on on com confirmation. Let's plan on that next week. Yeah, I'd be down. Yeah, because because there is a lot to talk about with the the concept of that theme, is very interesting to me, and it's been talked about forever. In yeah. a D and D Lego collaboration, like people, that's been brought up so many times over the last forty years, right? So yeah, D and D, &D yeah. was kind of like, um, who the hell is this toy company from the Scandinavian? Yeah, area yeah. <laughs> using a dungeon word in their castle. Okay, let's mm -hmm. sue them so they change it. Yeah. Oh, you know what Lego is? It's the biggest toy company in the world. Oh, D and D's <laughs> back. They got their attention again. Yeah, well, and it's, and like, it's almost hey, maybe you could make us a set. Well, and it's rich considering <laughs> that I think the Tolkien estate ended up suing D and D when they first launched for copying Lord of the Rings. So mm -hmm. then they go awesome. around and sue the Lego company instead. <laughs> so it's like everybody's suing each other. Just welcome to the <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and now everybody's friends. Yeah, now we're all now we have Lord of the Rings Lego, we have D and D all over, and we have D and D Lego. <laughs> it's all together. Everything's coming around. So. Yeah. Cool, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that too. Why don't we do this? Uh, Jose just mentioned the finalist of the Bricklink Designer Program Series Four. We could maybe do a quick. Yeah, we on we could probably too. mention that. We could probably mention those as well. Because there's actually two castle ones, and then one that's kind of a fantasy <laughs> castle thing. So lots yeah, of stuff to talk that's about. That's a good this. idea. All right, man. Well, that's it, man. Uh, thanks so much for joining, everybody. We really appreciate you jumping in. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Um, yep. And, of course, follow the channel uh, if you want to support us that way as well. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, so. and uh, come back come back next week for D&D. Uh, &D. Absolutely. Sounds good, man. All right, guys. Have a good night. Have a good night, guys.